and we are live welcome to the live stream welcome 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 i'm just going to start by playing a few things sorting out a few levels here we go Hopefully this is loud enough. And you can hear me talk as well as hearing the guitar. Okay, so Today we're talking about, what are we talking about? Um, we're talking about strategies for songwriters, maximizing your creative output. And um, so I basically want to, uh, I want to just kind of, have this a, a bit of an open discussion really and we'll see who comes along for the live stream but also welcome if you're watching the replay in the future um and basically i'm going to kind of talk about this is mainly for songwriters and i'm going to talk about um some some kind of tips that I use and some strategies that I've I've been over do, using over the years. Um, I've been writing songs for a long time, you know, and it's some things get easier, I guess. But it's but it's also as your life changes and your as your life gets more complicated, uh, I find it also gets harder in a way, you know. Um, So uh, I welcome any any songwriters to uh, to to say hello in the in the chat and uh, say say where you're joining us from this Saturday evening. I might play a few songs as well. Uh, but, uh, you know, one of the first things that I, that I think about when I'm writing is what is the mood of the song, you know, um, because I don't necessarily think like in, into technical terms of like, okay, what key is it going to be in, um, or what's the tempo going to be like? A little bit about that, but it, it, a lot of it is what is what is the mood of the song? What is what is the feeling of the song? You know, um, and a lot of the time I'll get inspiration from another song or another piece of music or something, um, and I just really like the feeling and I like the mood of that song, and I want to try and do something that's in a similar way and just capture that sort of essence of feeling the way it made me feel you know um and it doesn't have to be the chord structure or or even any of the instruments that are being used you know it's um it's kind of hard to describe just wondering if anybody else kind of gets that what's the first thing what is the first thing that you think of when you when you're writing a song you know um just out of interest it would be really interesting to to hear what other people say um you know um but maybe we'll start with a song here we go
what am I going to play? Just testing out all these these levels here. using a few pedals today. So I've got my microphone, uh, which is capturing my voice and my guitar. And I can, uh, I can solo that so you can kind of hear. Here we go. So it's completely dry, there's nothing else coming through. We've got da, da, we've got a few So that there is the pickup. just kind of brings it alive you know um, I experiment around sometimes I use the pickup sometimes I don't but I find sometimes it just adds a little bit more you know but I definitely like the microphone to pick up most of the sound um, and I find just one microphone just kind of does the job I don't need to set up like a mic for the guitar and a mic for my vocals necessarily um, all right yeah let's try say something here we go Try a bit of distortion, is that crazy? That's pretty wild. No, that's too crazy. chat hey 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 who's that bill bill how's it going good to have you to the live stream is uh is the audio sounding okay is it picking up everything picking up okay is my voice uh very clear can you hear me is the level okay um just let me know in the comments so I wanted to talk a little bit about um, songwriting and kind of strategies, and I want I want everyone to to share their strategies as well, you know, um, kind of what is the what's the first thing that you kind of that you think about when you're trying to write a song. Um, me, I'm trying to capture the the kind of the essence and the mood of the song. You know, I have this idea in my head, um, and I'm trying to to transcribe that from my head into my uh, into my instrument. I just need to grab my capo. Where's it way back here? Um, so that's that's kind of what I what goes through my head. 
um, is the mood and the feeling of a song is is really important um, when I'm songwriting. I was going to uh, I was going to play a song. <laughs> to himself with a crutch at his left and he walks with his help he got no money can't afford nothing else drinks on day falls over himself searching around these streets he roams and people's fallen change it's cold outside near home it's pouring down with rain but every don't have no home no money no job nowhere to go no, oh, I'm a nice sanity and this ain't funny Cause half of it you don't know Yeah, they call him Mad Eric when his kids walk by Curses, shouts and fists the sky Crazy old man, they call him, but why? Crazy old man, they say Go, Eric, go Play that blues, you know Oh, I find it hard to go Hungry, cold, tired, and broke. Every day's the same, just gets worse. Ain't got no one on this earth. Go, every go, play that blues, you know. Thank you. 
and that was Mad Eric, a song I wrote a long time ago now, a long, long time ago, probably like 15 years ago or something. Um, yeah, hope everyone's good. I might just turn down the audio a little bit because it's, um, it's getting a bit, it gets a bit loud sometimes. So I'll just turn it down a little bit, especially when I'm performing, doing a song. Um, Bill, Bill, how's it going? So let me know if you're a songwriter. Um, And this this basically this live stream is all about kind of songwriting and um, yeah kind of tips on on writing and tips about basically anything to to get that creative creative spark going and creative output. It can be hard sometimes, you know. Um, I like to try things, different things a lot, you know, and. Little and often, I find, is always a good thing. So if you're not, like, I feel like you have to, um, you have to practice the act of songwriting, you know? Like, we have to practice everything. We have to practice playing our instrument. We have to practice singing. We have to practice our songs. We have to practice the act of songwriting. We have to practice performing live. We have to practice recording you know all these all these different things um not even mentioning if you're releasing stuff we have to practice releasing and promotion and social media and everything like that you know um without getting into things too technical <laughs> there's lots of things we have to practice as songwriters as musicians um but the act of of songwriting you know is a is a big one i've been writing songs since i was 10 um and i'm still producing songs i think i always will be producing songs that i i don't like that much you know um but i find the more songs that i do the better i get at writing songs that i like you know um and that's really what what I'm doing. I'm just writing songs that I like, that I want to hear, that I enjoy, you know. Um, and you know, let me know in the comments if you who do you write songs for? Do you write songs for yourself? I'm guessing most people do, um, but maybe you don't. You know, maybe you write songs for your audience, for other people. Maybe you write songs for friends, or I don't know. Let me know. Um, so yeah, so uh, we're kind of talking about tips. So if anybody else, this is like um, with these live streams, it's kind of, you know, it's a way of me. I'm also giving, I'm giving tips to people, but I'm also giving tips to myself as well, you know. Um, so I try and practice what I preach in here, you know. Uh, and I'm, I'm in no means have perfected this at all you know i'm just saying this is what i'm trying to do i'm always trying to get better i'm still learning you know after however many years uh 30 years playing songwriting um so yeah so it's it's little and often is something that i that i really try and do because also I don't have too much time to just sit myself down for hours on end songwriting. That would also be good. Um, but I do like the little and often method, you know, as well. Um, I don't actually time myself or give myself a certain amount of time because it's uh, I'm trying to at the moment, I'm trying to sort of just take any moment that I have, usually evenings, um, something like this, I might have like an hour, you know, and I'll just really try and songwrite because you can do it in really small doses, but only if you really have a, a, a really good idea and you just need to jot something down and then it's like 15 minutes or something. 
Um, I find anything shorter than like half an hour doesn't really work. I find I, I kind of need an hour minimum, you know. Um, but I I can't always find that in my day, you know. So it's, um, yeah. So I, I usually it's the evenings, uh, but little and often. This is what I I try and do at the moment. Um, setting yourself challenges. This is something that I'm exploring, and this is where I'm. I this is if, in a situation where I just can't think of anything. <laughs> My mind is just blank. I just can't. I have no inspiration. Um, or or it's like sometimes there's too many choices. You know, there's, there's too many roads to go down. So just cut off some of those roads, you know. Um, give yourself some challenges. Some limit yourself, you know. Um, like maybe you're a song. Maybe you... you you play lots of different instruments. Um, limit yourself to just one instrument or limit yourself to like four chords, three chords, you know, two chords. Um, see how creative you can get with the limited things that you have, you know. Um, and you might find that you, through that, you get very, you're able to get very creative and that can inspire something, you know, and and kind of, have that spark to create something. Um, I find a lot of the time it's just kind of creating that spark, and that's that spark kind of drives you and and gives you more inspiration. You can kind of feed off that that first spark of a song, you know. Um, so that's that's my next point is is set yourself challenges. Uh, and let me know in the comments below, you know, if you have, if you use any of these tips or if you have any other tips, please let, let me know, let others know, um, because they're all, all good ideas, you know, I think every, everyone has some good ideas, um, and it's always good to share. Um, Another thing I like to do is write the blueprints first. So what do I mean by that is I like to, to kind of write the structure of the song before before it's written, you know. Um, I like to write the title as, as, as soon as I can and just it gives me it gives me kind of the blueprints of the song. What's the structure? How is it going to go? Chorus, verse, bridge, is there going to be uh, an instrumental part in there, so they're going to be solos. Um, and it doesn't have to be perfectly kind of mapped out every little detail, just like the rough idea. And I find, uh, as well as with the lyrics, you know, is having a story, because a lot of my songs have stories, so I like to write the rough story first, if I can. And then uh, that kind of stops me from getting stuck in the middle and thinking of like, okay, what happens now? Um, you know, I already know what's gonna happen. I just need to fill in the details, you know? I just need to, like, when you, if you're building a house, you have blueprints, you kind of already know where things are gonna go. Um, but maybe you haven't figured out all the little details yet, you know? Um, so that's that's kind of what I mean. All the little details are, are the, like the, a lot of for me is is the lyrics is working out all all the tiny little bits of lyrics. Um, I try and write the chorus first and the title because to me they're kind of the main points, um, and the chorus is kind of the home, the the where everything uh, almost starts. You know, the title and the chorus, and then the verses kind of kind of are, are the bits, the the windows and the doors and you know, the, the kind of the little details. and Although I guess maybe doors and windows are pretty important, aren't they? <laughs> I don't know if this metaphor can, uh, it's exactly right, but you know, I'm just going with it. Um, audio is sounding perfect, great. Thank you, thank you very much. Hey Jasper, how's it going? Good to have you. 
Um, so this live stream, I don't think this will be too long with this live stream. Um, sorry, my strings are like, my strings are really old. I need to change them. And they're just not, they're not keeping in tune. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm just interested on what you guys are, how often you write songs, if you write songs, I think, I think most people do, that, uh, of, that, that watch my videos. Um, yeah, how often do you write songs? Are you able to finish the songs? What's, what's your kind of what things do you struggle with? You know, let me know in the comments. Um, and for me, it's finishing songs and writing writing lyrics uh, I struggle with. I mean, we all have, I think we all go through moments of struggling with every aspect of songwriting. But... Um, Sometimes it's like just coming up with ideas, inspiration. Um, a lot of ins my inspiration comes from listening to other music. And, uh, but I'm actually, I've actually stopped listening to music when I'm kind of on my commute, out, when I'm outside, um, because I like to use that time to kind of think. And I find when I'm listening to music, I can't really think. Um, and uh, so I like when I'm walking outside, I like to think a lot and just kind of, I have a notebook and I, I jot down ideas. Uh, that's also for thinking about songs as well and all kinds of things. But um, I have a little notebook that I carry everywhere with me and I write down ideas. Um, so I've stopped listening to things outside, which has drastically reduced my uh, my listening. You know, I'm not really listening to that much anymore. And this has been a few years now. So um, mm, that also contributes to maybe not having as much inspiration. Uh, so I really try and when I can have these moments of just listening to new things. Um, yeah. So my tips that I've said at the moment is I write the, I first, I try and get the mood of the song. This is really important for me, is getting the mood and the feeling of the song first, if I can. Uh, I pra try and practice little and often. I practice the the act of songwriting, the art of songwriting. Um, I set myself challenges to do. So sometimes there's too many forks in the road, you know, just cut a few of those off and just limit yourself and you'll find you'll be, that will inspire you or that will force you to be creative with the limited choices that you have. Um, I write the blueprints first, so I kind of write the title and the chorus and the structure of everything first, as soon as possible. That stops me from getting stuck later on. Um, I try and schedule out my writing sessions during in the week. Uh, so this changes week by week um, because I, I don't have a regular sort of uh, regular work, regular job sort of stuff, you know, so I'm, I'm doing different stuff. Um, so this, this kind of changes, but I really try at the beginning of the week, I kind of know what I'm going to be doing, where I'm going to be. And at these moments where I know I'm going to be at home, then I try and schedule in a few sessions, as many as I can, really. At the moment, I'm trying to, uh, I'm, I'm trying my evenings, trying to just block out my evenings just for songwriting. And 
I'm, I'm still in two minds whether the evening is the best time for me to songwrite. Um, I'm, I'm naturally, I'm a morning person, and I think my brain is, is, uh, works better in the morning. But maybe that's better for like, I don't know, doing other tasks, <laughs> not songwriting. I find in the evening it, it can be nice because it means it's you're kind of more relaxed. You're getting ready to sleep. Um, there's less sort of tog, co togs, uh, cogs turning in your head, if you know what I mean. Uh, so it's, it's, I find I'm, I'm more open to, to creativeness. I don't know. Um, yeah. So I schedule in writing times in the week. Um, another big one is I try and give myself bullet points of what I'm going to work on during the sessions. And I don't know about you, but I find that a lot of the time when I go and I do my songwriting session, um, a lot of the time I end up, end up just noodling on the guitar. Um, it's, I think it's something probably very common amongst guitarists uh, that we just end, or we just end up just practicing our songs, you know which is also good, but that's not a songwriting session. That's not songwriting. That's practicing your songs, which I also need to do a lot more because I'm always forgetting my songs. But um, that's a different thing, you know. Uh, so you sh should not write that down as, oh, tick, I've done a songwriting session when I've just noodled on the guitar and practiced my songs that are already written uh, this is something I'm completely guilty of and let me know in the comments below if you're also guilty of this um, but uh, it can be don't get me wrong it's really nice to do that I love to to noodle on the guitar it's one of my favorite things to do but that's for another thing you know if you're really trying to songwrite if you're really trying to write a song um, then yeah, that's what you should really be doing, you know. So having, giving yourself these sort of goals and these targets, these bullet points of what you're going to work on um, and try and have it somewhere, either on your phone, on a screen, on a piece of paper, that's also good. Um, I have, I use notepads. I'm really a big fan of physical notebooks. I write these things down and I have it with me and I have it there and you know I'm it kind of reminds me if I get distracted that okay you know this is a songwriting session I should get back to my my songwriting and then my bullet points are not necessarily songwriting session don't noodle kind of thing but be very specific about what you're going to work on you know is it, um, are you going to work on a particular, the, the chords in a song? Um, are you going to start writing a song, you know? Um, because if you just, if you're very vague about what you're going to do, then that can be overwhelming and then you can easily get distracted. So be very, very specific, as specific as possible, really. That's what I try and do. So I say, like, what is my goal in this hour or whatever of songwriting? Um, I might say, if I haven't written anything, I might say, okay, I'm going to start writing a song. I'm going to start it. I'm going to get that inspiration and I'm going to start something, you know. Uh, and using some of the mes methods that I've talked about before, um, I would start a song. Um, and that's one of my goals, you know, and then I can kind of tick that off and I can feel good about that. Um, and my, the next goal might be come up with a title for the song. Come up with uh, some chords for the chorus. Um, you know, things like this. Try and be very, very specific. The more specific, the better. Because um, then it, it, it seems like it's, it doesn't seem too overwhelming, you know. Um, you can really 
it seems like it's really achievable, especially if you don't have much time to write in your writing session, you know. Um, go to the comments here. Jasper says, what is that? Ever listen to, uh, I can't, I can't see that because of the, hold on. Let me see if I can see that. For some reason, I'm not able to see your message here, Jasper. It's quite annoying. Someone... Stolp and Andier Andiera and Andre. Is that Andre? There's something blocking that with the name. It's uh it's really annoying. You can't see it exactly. Andre Stolp. Good advice on writing. No, I haven't. Um let me write that down. Andre Stolp. I'll check that out. Let me do another song. I do a lot of, uh, not a lot, but I do have quite a few covers, um, but I should probably do one of my own songs as we're talking about songwriting. Um, there's one, there's a new one. I have, I, have I finished it? I don't know if I've actually finished this song. memories and it's about it's about um you know when you have like memories of you as a kid and you have these very specific memories and a lot of the time for me at least uh it's not necessarily like very clear these memories they can be almost just just the smell of something or just the sound of something you know um, can kind of bring back memories and they can be almost more vivid than the actual um, than the actual image you know of of that memory like smell especially is very vivid um, and uh, yeah so it's, it's basically talking about this how I had this memory of going to the beach um, with my my family as a kid So I'll just, I'll play this song just to kind of break things up on this live stream. By the way, you know, this topic, uh, with these topics, um, I like to just kind of choose topics to talk about. Um, some of them are good. Some of them are maybe not so, not so good. Um, but, you know, I like to, uh, but it's all just very free. You know, you can kind of talk about anything you want. If you have any questions regarding anything, not just songwriting, um, then, uh, yeah, please feel free to, to chat away, to, to ask questions in the chat, and I'll get to them. played this one for a while actually I hope I remember it um, hey many vibes is here how's it going and who else do we have we have um, 
Guitar Joe. How's it going? Guitar Joe says, when is a song finished? And how do you manage a song which changes over time in terms of recording, documenting it? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, yeah, it's. I mean, it's uh, it's all subjective when a song is uh, is finished, you know, and it's kind of up to you when it's finished. Um, for me, this song isn't finished that I'm playing now. Um, simply because I haven't finished writing it. <laughs> um, although, no, I think I have just about, I just haven't, um, I haven't memorized all the words. I think for me, it's all subjective, you know, and it's all, um, but for me, a song is finished when, when I've written it and I've also really memorized it, you know, it's really in my in my brain and uh, maybe I've played it a few times live um, that's a finished song for me but songs are ever changing you know um, I'm I'm always trying to kind of change my songs a little bit because I I get bored of songs you know I get bored of my songs I get and I have these I have my favorites you know anybody that's seen my live streams or seen me play live a few times um, I always just pick my favorite songs and maybe that's a bad thing because I always just forget the ones that I that I uh, I don't like as much you know and I shouldn't because you can revive songs you can you can do whatever you want with them you can change them in any way which I really like to do um, yeah I hope that does that answer your question I don't know uh, money manager song changes over time in terms of recording documenting yeah it just changes you know and you got to go with it i i like that a song changes and i have songs that i recorded on my first album uh, when th 10 years ago now oh, 11 years ago and that are just completely different that's when i play them live now you know um so it's you know but that's that's kind of part of it and the way I see recordings is it's just capturing a moment in time, you know. And at that time, the song sounded like that in that moment, you know. And now the song might sound different. Whether you want to re-record or keep documenting that song, you know, is up to you. Um, hope that hope that answers it. Um. <laughs> Bill Bill says, have you ever taken vocal lessons? Love your voice. Thanks. <laughs> no, I haven't, actually. I, I was really self-conscious about my voice for years. Um, I felt I felt like I, uh, I, I, I really believed that I couldn't sing and that whenever I listened to my my singing, I just I just couldn't, you know, I would um, shivers down my spine whenever I would l hear myself sing. So I've always considered myself a guitarist first and a singer a, after, you know, a guitarist that sings, basically. But, um, and I think I, I still am not a huge fan of my, my voice. You know, there's definitely other better singers out there, but... Um, I think I've just gotten used to it now, you know. I think the more the more you listen to yourself sing, the more you just get kind of get used to it. Um, it was the same way when I start first started recording YouTube videos, and I was editing them. And you know, it, it's really weird hearing yourself talk, but you just get used to it, you know. Uh, but no, I haven't taken any singing lessons, no. Um, Uh, what is my door of choice? Um, it's, you know, with a, with a door, I'm, I don't really, I do use a DAW, but 
at the moment it's changing and um, at the moment I'm using Reaper. Uh, I quite like it. But you know, I don't really, uh, I don't really spend too much time editing my stuff. Um, I, although, you know, it can be really nice to do that, but I really try and get the sound as close as I can before I hit record, you know. That's why I like to use really simple setups. Um, although, having said that, at the moment, I'm going through pedals and all kinds of crazy stuff today. But I'll just try it out. Um, what tuning am I in? I'm in uh, Dadgad. As usual. <laughs> All right, I'm going to sing this song now. But if you've got any questions, then um, any more questions, then please let me know. And I was talking about kind of tips for songwriting earlier. Um, and I think I kind of went through all of them, all of my tips. But if you have any tips yourself uh, of songwriting tips, uh, then um, please drop them down in the comments for everyone else. Um, I'd say a few other things I would talk about is remove all distractions. That's like your phone and things like this, you know, um, and, and don't be discouraged. I think like a lot of the time I used to really be discouraged when I didn't like how the song was turning out, you know. And but I realized that you've actually got to practice the act of songwriting, practice the act of, of finishing a song, you know, because even though you might think it's rubbish, you might not when it once it's finished and it's as we talked about earlier, it's ever changing, you know, songs are constantly changing. And you might find that once you've played it live, and it, it's kind of found its, uh, its roots, I guess, um, you might find that you like it, you know. And also, it's okay to write a rubbish song. I'm still writing rubbish song, rubbish songs, rubbish songs. Um, you know, you kind of got to dig through, dig through the coal to find, to find the diamond, right? To find the gold. Um, that's kind of how it is. So this is called Memories.
Sunday morn, me dad said, everyone in the car, we don't have to drive too far, I roll my window down, radio on and blasting, cruising steadily, who can see the sea, it's the first to make a sound, and I'm the first to say what I have. Yeah, it just goes to show that uh, you should really practice your songs before you play them live or in a live stream. So I completely messed that one up. Completely forgot <laughs> how that song goes. Um, I just, uh, hopefully you didn't notice, but uh, maybe people who have heard that song before notice that one. Um, yeah, so it's, it's, it's something that is really practice your songs as much as you can um, but that's also not a songwriting session you know uh, that's something else but I really try and do that practice my songs but I should do it more often um, <laughs> sweet pedals <laughs> yeah uh, Many Vibes says, I heard that when we're just exploring, whatever notes we keep returning to is the key of the song. Is that true? Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, it can be. <laughs> it also might not be. I think it just... Uh, it depends. It really depends. Um, it depends on what what you mean by note. Keep returning to whether you're whether you're playing just individual notes. If you're just improvising, if you're playing chords, um, you know. And um, but a lot of the time that is true. I find like if you're I'm playing in the key of 
in my mind I'm playing in D, but I'm not because I've got my, the capo on the fourth fret, but you know what I mean. Uh, that's D major. You know, if I was just kind of exploring around trying to come up with a song, I might do something like that. Go to a few chords. Something like this. And that would be, you know, that would be my key of the, the my root, yeah. You know, that's that's kind of home, you know. No, but I'm in uh, I'm I'm in a dad get here, so a, there's a lot of there's a lot of D's in there, you know. Anyway, uh, so I'm I'm always bound to hit a D. Uh, anyway, you know, but yeah, it's uh, exploring. I love exploring, but um, I find with if you're using a, an open tuning, it's it can be you can find yourself kind of going to the same stuff, you know. I mean, especially if I'm in like, I mean, I'm talking about I'm talking about open tunings now, um, but you know. Dadgad has a very specific sound if I'm playing in that key, this key of, you know, it's lots of, lots of open strings, lots of like hammer-ons and pull-offs. Which is nice, which is lovely, but it's, it's, uh, it can sound all the same, you know. It's not for me. I the way I feel that is, it's not me playing, playing this. It's not me composing this. It's it's the tuning composing this, you know. It's Dadgad. Uh, so what I like to do is I like to to play in in different keys in Dadgad. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I I like to not play in too many different open tunings um, because then I'd have to learn them. <laughs> you know, I like to learn the, the tuning. Um, so when you play in different keys, you kind of have to know the tuning fairly well. Like I like to play in the key of C. one um, a minor is a really nice one as well I still like the open the open strings as well you know that's kind of part of it but not making it I don't like to make it too obvious that I'm playing in dadgad if I'm playing in in a in the key of D major or D minor then it's just very obvious, you know, and I find when I'm composing, I'm just gonna kind of, my fingers are just kind of going to the same places that they always, always will be going to if I'm in these open tunings, you know, um, or open keys, I should say. But if I'm playing in other keys like A minor, G major is a really good one. Um, G 
you rec- recommend that beginners stay in standard? I mean, um, I don't think it's I don't think it's too bad to explore different tunings if you're a beginner. Not at all. Um, but I I I would be hesitant to exploring too many different ones. You know, I, I mean, don't get me wrong. It can be really really fun to to play in an open tuning and alternate tunings they they are very very fun and they can uh they can be very um inspiring and and have all these amazing things i mean I, it it's uh i would still try it as a beginner you know because it's very different but still go back to standard for sure because if you never know what you're doing when you play, then it's always it's always going to limit you, you know. And you don't have to know all the theory. You don't even have to know the names of the notes to start off with, at least. Um, but just kind of know know what the sounds are, you know. What know what key you're playing in, and know the notes relative to that key, you know and know the chords relative to, to that key. Um, so kind of, yeah, if that makes sense. Um, and it's a lot easier to do that in just in standard than it is if you're playing in lots of different open tunings, you know. Um, but I definitely recommend trying open tunings, alternate tunings, open tunings, because um, it can be very, very fun and it's very freeing. Very different sound, but I still I still really like standard tuning, and I I teach standard tuning as well. So you know, hope that makes sense. <laughs> All right, um, I'm probably going to have to end it fairly soon guys because um i'm getting i'm getting kind of tired here it's uh it's not that late but you know it's um i'm exploring with a few pedals I'll do I did this last time I'll just I'll just do some like improvising sort of stuff if you have any questions well I'll just do this for the next sort of five or ten minutes if you have any questions just pop them in the comments and I'll answer I'll keep doing these just I'll just keep playing what pedals um, That there, if you know if you can hear that, that's the Strymon Blue Sky reverb. I'm also using, a, I've got a stereo set up using the AFX Acoustiverb by Fishman. got the uh have you got the blue sky or the acoustic verb or both
Ah, nice, nice. I, I, I read your, I read your comment wrong. I, you said nice name. I read it. Nice same. <laughs> I thought you said nice. Got the same. Uh, sorry, misread that. Just a guitar. Cool. That's cool as well. You know, I go through, I go through phases of really getting nerdy with the pedals and having all these sort of like these crazy sounds you know if I do like here we go something like this getting all like ambient and stuff you know um, and then and then I go through phases of just just having a microphone and that's it you know um, I think it's a it's a mixture of stuff you know It's a, it's a constant exploration with things, you know. That's kind of what makes it fun as well, isn't it? If we all just use the same stuff for the rest of our lives, then, yeah, kind of get a bit boring, wouldn't it? moment I'm kind of experimenting with recording with a mixture of the microphone and the pickup and then recording that in the in the door as with a separate track you know so I can then later adjust the levels um, kind of having that option I'm just exploring with this you know sound waves is fascinating yeah yeah it absolutely is it's very different to editing uh, like video you know when I edit video it seems like video is a lot simpler than than audio because you know video is just a, a series of frames it's just a bunch of pictures audio is it's just something completely different it's you can just zoom in as far as it goes you know there's no kind of endless um, got a volume pedal attached to my to the blue sky so I can then bring in these kind of swells whenever I want and kind of use it as a as an expression pedal but it's not as of just a volume pedal so I can do like as you hear there's like very little reverb now it's just the acoustic verb, but if I bring in the volume pedal, brings in the blue sky, and then take it out again. Kind of gives me full control, you know, over the effects, which I really like. 
I never like how when you turn on a pedal, that's it. You know, you kind of, you don't have control over how that effect sounds, you know, after that. Of course, you can fiddle with the knobs, but, you know, no one wants to do that on stage while you're playing. You're not going to be able to do that. But having like a expression pedal, you know, or in this case, it's a volume pedal, just wired up like an expression pedal it kind of allows me to do things like that you know how is my sound come well coming so well through the video um i'm i'm going in through a audio interface so I got this mic I got my uh, pickup all going in through an audio interface and then they're going into my DAW and then they're connected to OBS which is the program that I'm using to stream and then OBS is streaming to YouTube <laughs> bit of a complicated setup but you know I I quite like complicated setups now and again until they crash <laughs> Yes, good internet, yeah. I mean, the internet, I'm, I'm like connected to, uh, connected to the ethernet, you know, but I'm down here in the basement, so it's, it's actually a cable that runs like 30 feet or something. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's connected directly on ethernet, so it's gonna be, the, the signal's gonna be quite good. Yeah, cellular data, yeah, gets a bit funny, doesn't it? But you can still get a good, you can still get a good sound from your phone, you know, there's lots of things you can connect directly to a phone. Um, ah, it's just out of my reach at the moment, but I use this thing called a Zoom H4N Pro. I've done loads of videos on it. Well, I say loads. A few videos on it. Um, and it's just like a handy, little handy recorder. And, you know, you can actually connect that, use that as uh, a... a uh, audio interface and plug it directly into your phone. Which I only discovered the other day. You need a little adapter for it, but that's that's nothing. Um, so that's pretty cool, you know. And it has these really good microphones on. Um, so that's a, that's one way you can get a really good sound, you know, directly from your phone. And then you can then you can live stream or even just record videos straight from your phone. How's it going? Uh, I did my finger picking practice, but still a long way to go. Ah, oh, that's good. It's good you practice. Nice. Well done. I am in. I'm in Dadgad at the moment. Yeah, it's my usual, my go-to tuning. It's like my standard tuning. So 
I'll do it. I'll do it for four more minutes. Then I'm gonna stop, guys, because it's uh, it's getting late for me. So if you've got any last questions, then um, go ahead. Now's the time. Reverb is Strymon Blue Sky. I'm actually using two reverbs. I'm using the Strymon Blue Sky for like the more, uh, more extended, these sort of sounds, if you can hear that. And then I'm just using like a standard, my, my standard reverb, my, which is this, which is the AFX Acoustic Verb by Fishman. And then I've, of course I've still got my microphone picking up, but that's there's that's just completely dry. There's no reverb on that. And the the blue sky is connected to a volume pedal. So I can use my foot, I'm using my foot at the moment to kind of bring it in and out as I want. Um, so kind of treating it like an expression pedal. Exactly, many vibes is... Uh... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Letting everyone know, thanks so much. with a song yeah absolutely I could do a song let's do a song um, I'm gonna do one called the river and this is one of one of my favorite songs to play
He's a loner, he's an old man An old boater used to have plans Now all he has is a very long beard Keeping him awake on all these tears He has one friend in all the world His old dog with a long grey coat He never sees a light of day Just waiting for time He's a dad, he's a nice guy, a young father that doesn't know why. Can't see his poor little son, cause all these things this kid's mother has done. And he has no money, no job, he do anything to earn a few more. You look at him and you may judge his soul. Feels for his son is love. Down by the river, you may find nothing but tits and tag. Here at the river, we all are just a bunch of. Thanks so much, everyone. Thanks for joining me on this live stream. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I certainly did. And uh, I will catch you all on the next live stream. So I try and do this every Saturday. So I try and catch you guys next week. Have a good weekend, everyone. Bye bye.